So, we are back. This is the Pencil Kings Podcast, and I'm calling this the Evolved Student Interview Series. It's not a very sexy name, but uh, really I wanted to give everyone a peek into what's happening and some of the amazing stories that are coming out of uh, Evolve because the it's it's just so cool and exciting, and I feel like a lot of it happens behind closed doors, and so this is a chance to see and hear from some of the students. So. Today we are speaking with Michael. So, uh, Michael, um, where are we speaking to you from today? Well, uh, from the central part of the U.S., the Midwestern uh, United States. Uh, and thank you, thank you for having me. This is this is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, it's exciting. Like I, I feel like um, um, Kristen and Peggy, who we had on before. Both of them were saying like, oh, you know, I've been listening to the podcast and it's really cool to now be on the flip side and being interviewed. And so, yeah, yeah, it's kind of come full circle and it's something I never thought would would happen here. So this is really cool. Thank you. Yeah. And so um, the first question is, when did you get started with Evolve? Um, I think it was September of 2017. So I was one of the first groups. Uh, well, the first group, not one of the first, the first group. Yeah, the very first group that we, like, I started the same time you did. You're mm -hmm. much further ahead than I am, but uh, we started, <laughs> we got our boxes around the same time. Um, and before you joined the program, had you done any formal art or even informal art training? Um, mostly informal. Um, you know, I, I'd done art in school. Uh, take it every art class I could in in high school. Uh, I, nothing really to to write home about, but uh, won won a few awards there. Um, did some like college, I guess you would say, audited a couple drawing classes in college. Took some community uh, college drawing courses, things like that. And then recently, in the past three years, I think it was 2016 timeframe, I had uh, got into an online program. That was uh, a pretty strong drawing program. It was mostly drawing in, in charcoal and, and newsprint to start out. And in that program, uh, they really wanted you to stay in the drawing portion for uh, a couple of years before you moved on to any kind of a painting uh, program. Interesting. So art's always been a, it sounds like a, like a, a part of your life in, in one way or another, all the way through, even if you weren't doing it in a hardcore fashion, you were still like coming back to it and here and there. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, pretty much. There were a few years there where I, where I took a number of years off to do, um, you know, I, I work as a technical person, an IT person. I took some time off and didn't do any art when I was trying to learn, uh, you know, uh, technical uh, courses, technical w working with my job, um, getting getting involved in tech and. And another hobby I do, woodworking, I, I got into that uh, really heavily and kind of put art to the side for a while. But that in itself is also pretty creative, um, I think. So it's still working with my hands in, in both aspects. But yeah, it, it's been, and it's something I've come back to, back and forth to. But, but the thing about um, that was I would pick it up and then I always had the... Um, I had always had the thought that, you know, it was only only my talent, right? So I only had so much talent, so I was never really super serious about it. I wanted to go for school to after high school. I wanted to go to college for it, but it just couldn't get um, – just couldn't get somebody to, to push me. I didn't know what to do myself, but I couldn't get anybody. I wanted to go in art school. I didn't want to go to a four-year university where I had to do a bunch of other courses. But if I was going to do art, I wanted to do nothing but art. I didn't see why I had to study other subjects because I just want to do art. Um, so it kind of fell by the wayside because of that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it, it's pretty much been a part of my life. I, I was, I think when I was five years old, I won a, I won a contest for coloring an Easter egg, a paper Easter egg, you know, and it, at a local <laughs> drugstore. So, you know, I can remember the back that far art being an influence in my life. And then in, you know, teenage years with, with comic books and, trying to emulate what was in the comic books. And, and that was, a, a that's always been, ever since then, has been a main influence in my uh, art, I guess. I, I always come back around to that. One of the things I think that's interesting is that you you kept coming back. Like, did, did you feel an urge 
if you had gone years without creating or what kept bringing you back? And the reason why I ask is I feel like there's a lot of people, and this is a story that I hear, that it's like you're just creative or there's some kind of artistic thing inside of you and career or family or whatever it is comes and kind of takes precedent. And then after a while, it just keeps coming back and it keeps coming back. And I hear this all the time. People are like, I'm getting back into art. I'm rediscovering art. I used to love art, but I didn't know how to make it fit into my life at the time. And now I'm getting back into it. But it, it seems like just hearing your story, you've come back several times. So could you, could you identify a feeling or something? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It was just, it was just a creative urge really. Um, and, and something, and something I knew I, I loved something that maybe it was, um, I don't know if nostalgia, but maybe it was more of a, like I have a safe place type of a thing where this, I remember, you know, as a kid sitting in my room and drawing for hours, you know, that, that was always uh, a time in my life. I could look back and, and it was, you know, even though I wasn't out hanging out with my friends or not, I, I had a great time. So it's it, some of that, some of that is probably because of that, but um, a lot of it was just, you know, I need to do this for, for whatever reason. I yeah. just, I just feel nervous to pick up a pencil. So, and, you know, and start drawing. So, and then I just got more, and I, I think it was like 20, early 2016, I picked one up. I I actually started to, I, I drew a portrait of my daughter that I'd taken, you know, I really liked the the light and, and kind of the, you know, I'd just taken a snapshot in a restaurant or something. And um, that really started me. And I haven't put down a pencil since then or, or a paintbrush now, um, but it was early on then. And I'm like, you know what, if, if, I'm not ever putting down a pencil again, you know, forget it. I want to focus on art <laughs> no matter what I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to focus on art. So I started drawing portraits of, off of photographs and things like that. And then I searched through online programs and that's where I found the, the one I mentioned earlier, got into that. And then of course evolved, fell into my lap and I'm like, I got to take this chance or, or else, you know, I'm going to be stuck where I am. And I, I felt like evolve was my last chance to really become an artist. Interesting. Cause yeah, I want to ask, like, what what pushed you over the edge to start with Evolve? Was there one thing that you remember where it just kind of clicked in? Like, I, for me, when Kevin said um, his average student gets $80,000 in scholarships, that's where it clicked for me. I was like, I got to get on a plane and see if this thing is real because mm -hmm. that's just something that's – it's so crazy. Like, it's it sounds so crazy that you it's not something that someone would make up that's how I right. felt. So I had to go and see for myself. And that was the thing for me. But for you, do you remember what it was that pushed you or? Well, the program I was in, um, you, it, it's still a good program. And I learned a lot of great things about, about working that. That was the first program that anybody ever sat down and said, Hey, if you want to get good at this and, and, it, and it seems so obvious, but if you want to get good at this practice every day, you know, spend some time, spend, spend an hour if you can. Right. Make a habit out of out of your drawing. That's the first place I ever really heard that, you know, it, all through school. And even after that, you know, whatever book you read, it just doesn't come across as, you know, hey, if you really want to get good at this, it's it's work. It's not your talent. Right. And I cringe. I, I'm better now, but but I cringe at the word talent because I'm like, no, it's it's work. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, so that program had kind of had kind of slowed down for me because I had problem getting feedback from instructors. I was trying to move ahead and I wasn't getting the feedback. So I don't know if they just didn't give the care and feeding that they need to, to their online program like they should. Um, but it took me like a month to get feedback, to get to, to finalize Ooh. one portion of the program. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? And that's right around the time of all was happening. I'm like, this is an easy decision for me. Part of it maybe was, you know, I was on the fence. For, for a while, and, and, and I did stay that way before I'm like, you know what, I'll give it a shot, right? Partly maybe because I wanted to test Kevin and see if this guy's for real, you know? Okay, take my money and let me see, let me see if you're for real, okay? You're, you're saying that, you know, in the intro video, he says the biggest hurdle they face is convincing people this is real. And I don't know how many times I watched that video, I'm like, okay, let's, let's see if you're real, all right? I, it, part of it was, you know, was almost a dare uh, to, you know, to see if I could prove him wrong. Right. But when I did go into it, I, I made the commitment to myself that, all right, if this is real, I'm going to commit to it. 
not worry about any uh, any other outside projects, anything else. But I'm I'm going to focus on this and see if this is what it says it is. And it's been it's been grand ever since. You know, <laughs> it's been a great journey. Um, so and I I shudder to think of what what if I didn't. You know, sure I could come back later and say, hey, you know what. Uh, you know, is that is that evolved thing still around? Maybe do a search for it. But um, I may have forgotten about it. And, and I shudder to think if, if I would have passed it up and forgotten about it, where would I be now? Um, you know, it, 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 it kind of scares me. I'm like, I'm glad. What is it? The blue pill? I took the blue pill. Is, is that the, uh, <laughs> I can't remember if it's the blue pill or the red pill, but I'm glad I took the right pill. And and uh, and here we are. So, yeah, it's, th- that's one of the things that I I'm constantly like p- pinching myself to just be like, you know, get in the groove, Mitch, get, start taking action. Because I, I look up to you just like a lot of the other students look up to you as kind of an example of where we are going to get to. Um, and it's not, I don't necessarily look like, look at you as though you have any special uh, talent or anything like that. Like mm. that, that's a word that we just don't use. Yeah, I wouldn't want like, that either. It's, it's more of like you're, it's the dedication that we admire and the, the consistency, I think, of, of putting in the time and finding a way for to fit this within your schedule. And so when you made that mental commitment to say, I'm going to go and, and see if this will give me what I want, did you have to rearrange any parts of your life to, to make space for this? Because I feel like it is a commitment and it is work and the results are, are there for anyone to get. But it's not like you can show up 15 minutes here or an hour there and then drop it for three weeks and come back. It doesn't ha- happen like that. It's like you, you need to just be consistently making forward progress. So t- was there any special things that you had to do with your schedule to make it work, to find time? Nothing um, nothing significant because, uh, like I said, the, the, the program I was in before uh, encouraged you to be structured like every day, find, okay. find a time every day so then i was getting up really early to get like an hour or two in a, of drawing time and somebody um i don't remember if it was a student in that course or somewhere else i heard it but it's just like you make it a habit you just like uh flossing right that's that's the that's the example to use flossing if you you know if you if you make flossing a habit nobody wants to really take the time to do it but it, it doesn't take that much time and once you make it a habit it, it's a habit for life um so it's sort of the same thing, you know, only if you have 15 minutes to draw, do that. And then that 15 minutes becomes, oh, well, wait a minute, I've, I've got 30 minutes. I can fit 30 minutes. Wait a minute. I can cut this out and I can do this. I don't have to run down to the coffee shop this morning. I can make my own coffee and <laughs> save that 20 minutes and yeah, and draw, right? I can take a sketchbook with me in the car while the wife's shopping and, and I can, I could doodle, you know, in the car or, or, or on a bench in the mall, whatever. Um, but just finding finding time and, and I, I think I think people would be amazed they, they could cut out some some of the static uh, to be able to uh, to find the time to really commit if they really want to do it. Yeah. But, it but but to answer your question, no, it wasn't that big of a change. And, and over time, um, my time, so, you know, sometimes with painting, especially it's moved more. Sometimes I get time in the morning, but it's moved more towards the evenings where. I've got that time. If, if I need to push myself, I can stay up later and I'm not running against, you know, a clock to, you know, to get onto work or get onto an appointment. So mm-hmm. that helps. Yeah. And, and where are you working towards? Like, where do you see yourself? Where do you want to get to with, with this program? Well, short term, I just want to finish the painting I'm working on. Right. right. Which, which <laughs> I, we can I'm see focused. I'm focused, you, right? right? I want to, I'm, that's, that's where I'm trying to get to. I'm trying to get to finish this painting, right? And then finish the next one. But long term, I don't know, you, you and I have talked long term. I'd like to do, you know, a comic book cover. You know, there I said it, it's out there. Um, you know, I, I usually play things like that pretty close to the, to the vest and, and, and not talk about it a lot, but that would be an ultimate for me. But, but I like portraits too. And I know we're going to get into portraiture. I'd like to be doing that, but also I'm keeping my mind open. I'm not going to say, you know, it has to be this one thing or this, this one or two things. I, I'm trying to keep an open mind and I'm, I'm just, I'm just focused on the course right now. And then, uh, I'm going to see where things go. 
right? I know I've got the skills. I have more skills now than I ever thought I would have up, up to this point. And I'm not try, I'm not bragging about that. I mean, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You, you've seen uh, mm-hmm. the work that people do in the studio and online. Uh, but ultimately, I, I'm, you know, I, and I may get more of a focus, maybe get more of an idea, but I really want to finish the program before, or get at least get closer to the end of the program before I start really, really trying to dial that in and get, you know, it, cause it, it may change, you know, I may decide something else, but even if I never, uh, sell a painting, you know, when, when I first entered the program, my goal wasn't to even, I wasn't even thinking about professionally selling anything, right? I just wanted to do it because that would, that's something that would fulfill me as a person, just be able to create some art and say, you know, I'm able to do it. I did it. That would be satisfying enough for me, but through the course of talking to Kevin and our homework classes and, uh, you know, online and, and privately, um, you know, I, I'm like, why not? Why can't I, you know, <laughs> yeah, the myth of the starving artist is dead. You know, <laughs> forget that, you know, evolvers, evolvers don't talk about starving artists. Right. So that's, uh, yeah, we, we don't, it never no, comes up. No, everyone no. sees it. And everyone that I've talked to that's put in the work, there's a point before they even finish block four, which we call the foundation, which is you're just about finished block four now, mm-hmm. where the people around them are like, hey, I see what you're doing. Can 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 you paint something for me? I feel like all, you, you bet someone has asked you, right? And you told them that you yes. were ready. Like, I feel yeah. like yeah. almost everyone has had that experience. And they just said, this is another thing that I think is really interesting and, and worth noting uh, for people listening is this idea that the students who are who I've interviewed. So Michael, Peggy and, and Kristen so far, I tend to look into the future way too much. And I've only become I've only recently realized this to be like, I live in this future Mitch version way too often. And but everyone who's doing very well with the program, because that's part of what I'm trying to understand here is how do we as students do better? Everyone's living in the present moment. Just I just have the assignment mm-hmm. in front of me. And then I have the one after that. I'm not worried about much beyond there. And I know if I have a question or a problem that there's a support network there for me, but it's for this thing that I'm at on right now. Yeah. And, and I, I'm glad you brought that up too, because that brings to mind a, a quote and I, I, I can't quote it verbatim, but um, really the gist of it is uh, it's one of the Stephen Pressfield books. I can't remember if it was the, the war of art or, or, or um, the one around. about turning pro he makes a statement in a very short paragraph. He talks about the amateur um, allows himself to fear the past and hope for the future. The pro, and he's saying, you know, the pro is in the moment and working, not worrying about past failures, not looking forward, hoping something else happens or hoping they'll get to do something or, or hoping, you know, some amount of money will come their way through their work. They're working, you know, that that's all you have time for you. You just work. So it, yeah. it, it's a very, yeah, and it, it is very, you know, you, you try to stay focused, you, you stay present and not let your mind, like I said, wander, um, you know, fear the past or, or hope for the future. You just try and stay in the now mm-hmm. and keep your head down and work. Yeah. And I, I think that that has been a theme. I <laughs> watching the other podcasts with, with Peggy and Chris, you know, the, the running theme through these is going to be work, right? Yeah. Just, so. just more work. There's, there's like, it's there for everybody. And I think that's, that's, it's starting. It's every day it becomes more real. Like every day, another student gets closer to where their work is just, Oh my God, you made this and you, you never picked up a paintbrush before. It's like, yeah, I, you know, I, that was, that was Kristen's story. Um, and now she, she's just, uh, flying. Um, so to change gears a little bit, when you are not doing this because you're not full time on your art, uh, how are you spending your, your time? What, what, what keeps you busy? Well, I have a full-time job. I have a fairly large family. I won't go into details about that, but, but, uh, you know, those, those things keep you busy. Um, I don't know. I, I like to read. I, uh, do woodworking occasionally, but not as much as I, as I was right before I got into Evolve. Uh, I used to make, uh, all kinds of uh, furniture using, um, mostly reclaimed wood. But uh, I, I just don't have the time with Evolve. I decided to, you know, 
even though I got a, a, a pretty large investment in some of the tools and I, I, you know, I built a lot of stuff. I just don't have the time for it right now. And I'm like, you know what? I'm, I know I, I'll get back to it one of these days, but for right now, this is, this is the, uh, the priority. Mm -hmm. And, uh, what's your strategy when you're, when you're sit down to do your work or when you're compartmentalizing things and kind of juggling all the different balls of, of work and family, what's your strategy for getting the work done? And I'm trying to uncover the common thread here mm. of how people are, are, are working so that, because I know some students get stuck along the way, like I was stuck for a long time and it's just a chance to learn from some people who didn't get stuck, the different strategies that we might be able to use personally. Just, well, and this, and this goes back to, this is something I, I've done too. And it kind of goes back to um, what Peggy was saying about knowing yourself. I mean, I've, I've been, I've, you know, I don't know, well, maybe I'm like in my early thirties, I, I just started to realize, you know, more about myself, you know, and, and that sounds um, obvious, right? But I think, I don't think it's a, it's a thing that a lot of people might do. I mean, just knowing your, your likes, your dislikes, your, your habits, being honest with yourself um, in that I know that sometimes I will procrastinate starting a painting. And it's just a matter of this internal dialogue, knock it off, get in there, sit down in the chair and start, start working, you know, and, uh, and, and that's really all it is. You know, when I know when, what my schedule is going to be like for the most part and when I can work and when I'm going to have to do other things. And, uh, you know, I, I try to focus I'm like, okay, I know I've got nothing going on this evening after work. I'm going to, you know, eat dinner spend a little time with family. I want to get to work on a painting. You know, I, I know I have X amount of hours to work this evening. So I know that and I do it. I sit down, I, I get my stuff out and get it ready. Um, and sometimes I move back and forth between my office slash studio here and uh, upstairs with the family. I actually built a, um, a tabletop version of the, the Evolve student easel <laughs> last weekend because I needed something a little, I, I had a flimsier metal one that, you know, the one you buy on Amazon, I, I, um, and I wanted to use the mall stick, but it just wouldn't cut it with what I had. So I went out and I, I built one in like 30 minutes out of, out of some scraps I had in the garage. So my, you know, my woodworking skills came in really handy there. <laughs> and so I, I built a nice, you know, adjustable easel that, that mimics this one. And, uh, so sometimes I, I go back and forth between down here or upstairs and, and I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll paint one, spend a time with the family and they're running through the room and doing who knows what, but, um, that way I can get more time in, in painting. I, you know, I don't feel as bad that I'm neglecting everybody. And uh, how did that work? Like when you started painting with the family, was it a new thing? So they were kind of bugging you, but now they know that you're in your mode and they kind of ignore you. Like if they've normalized you being at the easel, but still being part of the, the normal family life. They they pretty much ignore me anyway. <laughs> so it, I mean, it's just par for the course. I mean, um, once in a while, one of the kids will walk by, see them work. I'm like, Hey, and they'll say, Hey, that's, that's really nice. I'm like, thanks. You know, but even if I'm just starting out, they're like, Hey, that's a nice picture, dad. And I'm like, thanks. <laughs> so, uh, um, you know, and, and the whole time I've been doing, I told you this story that I think, I don't know if it was the mole or the perfume bottle. My wife stopped and she's like, I'm like, yeah. And she's like, that looks really nice. I'm like, thanks. And that's, that's pretty, I think that's the one, the one that she's only ever really comment. I mean, she just pretty much lets me alone and, and does my thing. And, and, uh, and you know, they just know that that's what I'm doing. Yeah. That's cool. And I, I, I'm really excited by hearing these stories when there's family members who it takes them a while to come around to the journey that you're on. And then all of a sudden one day they're like, Hey, that, that's that's like really good. And I, yeah. I don't know. I just get such a kick out of hearing because I I can see you light up, and I can see other people light up when they tell that story. It's like, oh yeah, they noticed. You know, I'm I'm still waiting. It hasn't happened for me, but yeah, I, I know that once, there. once color starts being introduced, and once it gets, starts getting tightened up, that yeah, that that oh yeah, bridge will, will be crossed. Um, so while you're working on your paint, you, you talked a little bit that your family is, is around sometimes, but I know you said sometimes. And the question they ask is what's on in the background while you're evolving. But uh, sometimes you said that you, you just have nothing going on because you're focused so intently. Um, mm -hmm. 
Is is that happen a lot, or is that a very rare occurrence? It's more it's more now in in block four, um, especially at the beginning. I loosened up a little bit, um, but at it, it, it first, it's just it, there's so much decision making going on with because we're working in a linear fashion in block four, meaning you're working um, from darkest value to lightest, whereas the other blocks, the, the painting, you, you're doing. Um, I don't know what Kevin calls it, but it, but it's a non-linear um, way of working. So it's you know you you you're you're putting in your shadows, right? Then you're putting in your lights, whether it be moderate or extreme, and then you're you're working on your your gradients, your sharp edges. You have a very you you have what seems like a linear process, but it's really not. Um, and you realize that when you get to block four, because you're actually going from darkest to lightest in you know, in, in each area, you're not laying down paint on the whole canvas and going back and putting in whatever reflections or highlights when you get to that point. All those things are built in as you work your way across the painting or across the canvas. Mm -hmm. And you can see th you're painting here in the background, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, yeah. uh, the current one that you're working on. And yeah. You can see exactly working on the, Michael's talking about. the lion's head. Yeah. So what would you tell someone who's new to Evolve to inspire them? Let's say they signed up yesterday and they're waiting to get their box. How can they mentally prepare or, or get ready for the journey ahead? Well, I'm just, I mean, be prepared to work. I mean, it, it's... It, it seems like a lot of work, and when you when you but when you look back, I think it's like it, the the time really does go by go by pretty quickly when you're when you're your head's down and, you, and you're working. But you know, um, it's rewarding. It, it, it's worth it. Uh, but but be prepared. Be prepared to work. Don't be afraid to work, right? And, and try to make it a habit as much as possible. Try to find, and I think this is a recurring theme too. Try to find a set time in the day. Uh, where that works for you best, where you know that, okay, I'm blocking this time out, if at all possible, uh, for the homework. And and don't, and, you know, another thing I'd say, please, please come into the homework. We're coming to the end of the group on Facebook. And we're here to help. And don't be afraid to reach out to to um, to the instructors, uh, to you, to to anybody that's, that's anywhere, you know, in the program for, for help. I've had people message me, uh, for help. And, uh, you know, we, we've talked about it. We get a lot of questions answered in the homework room. Right. And I, you know, thank you to that for the community, because that even, even that I was on the fence about doing that. I'm like, you know what, it's a, it's a new opportunity. Open, open you. Kevin was just talking about this the other night, open yourself up to new things. Right. And I opened myself up and, and it's been fantastic. You know, I met a lot of great people and, you know, learned a lot of new things and we're there to help each other. So if you if you get stuck and encouraged, I mean, gee whiz, I've never met a more encouraging group of of people focused on you know on making art. So uh, yeah, I would just say that. Please, please, yeah, come into the homework room. Don't don't be shy. Yeah, really, it, it's nobody's you know nobody here. I mean, I've never had a bad experience with it. And everybody's here. Everybody loves to see new faces. I mean, Peggy, Peggy's the welcoming committee. If she's like, if she's on. I love it because because Peggy's the first one to welcome somebody and, and ask them who they are. And, you know, you you know how she is. So, uh, yeah, she's awesome. So, uh, Michael, if we want to go and see some of your work online, what's the best place to find it, and so we can follow your progress as you're going through the program? I would say uh, Instagram. I have an Instagram page at at Michael Ray Art, all one word. So M I C H A E L R A. Y A R T? Yes. Perfect. Correct. Yep. All yep. right. And we'll have links for that over at pencilkings.com slash 185. If you're listening, I've got a better naming sc uh, scheme now. So it's easier to get to these uh, episodes and get some of the links. So thank you so much, Michael, for sharing your journey. And absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see the progress, especially just going forward. It's, it's really just been a pleasure watching you go through the program and um, I'm extremely inspired uh, just like with all the other people I've been interviewing um, personally uh, and looking forward to my own progress and, and walking the same path as you. So thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. Oh, thank you. So, have a good night.
skill, years of practice. Ah, you talk like a fool. I would trade a century of practice for an ounce of inspiration. 